ancient times, buildings were constructed with materials like stone, mud, bamboo, and wood. Over time, the materials and techniques for construction became more refined and buildings became more modern. Brick making and the different production methods used in the Kathmandu Valley have distinguished the city's architecture for centuries, giving rise to a unique civilization renowned for its skill and craftsmanship. Bricks of various shapes and sizes can still be seen in temples and structures built during the Lichavi dynasty, that is, in the 3rd and 7th century, and the Malla dynasty, that is, during the 13th to 18th century. The type of clay used, the type of bricks, and the way they are fired come from knowledge acquired over generations. And the Awali families in the valley are in this business from generation after generation. For centuries, people have migrated to cities in search of opportunities. The decade-long conflict period in Nepal from 1996 to 2006 also propelled people from the countryside to urban centers for safety and security which has resulted in rapid urbanization. To support the growing population, new residential areas and tall buildings are being constructed in the cities. Thus, the demand for bricks is on the rise across the country. Consequently, the number of brick kilns has grown in and near the urban areas. Presently, there are over 700 brick kilns across Nepal and 100 in the Kathmandu Valley alone. According to the Department of Cottage and Small Industries, the nation's kilns produce 4 to 5 billion bricks a year. The process of brick making has been the same since the first fired bricks were produced thousands of years ago. The process of brick making, excavation, clay preparation, molding of clay, drying and firing. However, some parts of the process have been refined. Clay is traditionally prepared by hand but now it can also be mixed by a machine called the pug mill. Similarly, bricks can be molded manually or in large industrial kilns and extruder can be used. After the bricks are formed, they are dried. They can be dried in open air by natural sun drying or in a dryer by waste heat from kilns and direct firing. Then they are fired and cooled in a kiln. The firing temperature depends on types of clay, but common firing temperature of the brick is 950 to 1150 degrees Celsius. The earliest type of kiln introduced in Nepal was the clamp kiln. Then movable bull trench kilns with movable chimneys. These movable bull trench kilns consume high energy and produce high emissions which result in environmental degradation. As a result, the government of Nepal banned these kilns within the Kathmandu Valley in 2003 and across Nepal in 2012. <laughs> एकदम 
brick factories have also been identified as one of the environment polluting sectors resulting in substantial emission of carbon dioxide and short-lived climate pollutants like black carbon. Short-lived climate pollutants are agents that have a relatively short lifetime in the atmosphere and a warming influence on the climate. The main short-lived climate pollutants are black carbon, methane and tropospheric ozone. Black carbon is a major component of soot, which is a result of the incomplete combustion of fossil and biomass fuels. Fixed chimney and vertical shaft brick kiln VSBK are the two technologies that can immediately help reduce in pollution. The fixed chimney bull trench kiln has a permanent chimney over 30 meters high. They are more fuel efficient than movable chimney kilns. The specific consumption of movable kiln is around 1.7 megajoule per kg of fire bricks. For fixed chimney, it reduces to 1.3 to 1.4. That means 1.7 to 1.3, there is a huge savings. 1 kg carbon gives 3.6 kg of carbon dioxide. Further efforts are being made to reduce the emissions from fixed chimney kilns by stacking the bricks as seen in fixed chimney zigzag kilns. You part my arm, pack you with you buy zigzag itama. I mean, I go like travel around the Kiriko method. Ne zigzag is straight. The air inside the zigzag flows like this. Zigzag kilns offer a 15 to 20 percent reduction in specific energy consumption and up to a 75 percent reduction in suspended particulate matter (SPM) emissions over straight line firing fixed chimney kilns. Zigzag kilns have two methods of firing forced draught and natural draught. Force draught firing uses a fan to circulate the air, resulting in more even burning of the fuel. Hence increasing the fuel efficiency and reducing the emission of climate pollutants. And natural draught needs the higher chimney with good engineering design to suck the air out. The VSBK is a vertical kiln with stationary fire and moving brick management in which the air moves upwards and the bricks moves downwards. I use a loading this technology is one of the best available options for small brick manufacturers. If the necessary raw materials, fuel used for brick making and skilled labor are available, it can reduce coal consumption by up to 15%, thus reducing emission of carbon dioxide emissions and black carbon by as much as 50 percent. 
it also reduces the emission of particulate matter by 90%, which would reduce the frequency of respiratory illness among brick kiln workers. Since there is a 58% reduction in fuel consumption, plant will reduce the significant production cost. Out of total cost of productions, energy cost contribution is 30 to 40%. In Nepal, however, lack of skilled labor, clay sensitivity is the challenge in the use of VSBK technology. Through an initiative of Chinese government, in 1970, Hoffman Kilns, advanced brick technology was introduced in Nepal. It has an efficient brick production capacity, but entrepreneurs in Nepal have been reluctant to accept the technology as it requires a large initial investment. Brick factories in Nepal consume over 60% of coal burned inside the country out of the total consumption. And this sector is responsible for nearly 8 tons of carbon dioxide emissions per day polluting the urban and suburban area. अब बस्ती बढ्दै गइसकेपछि इटा उद्योगहरुलाई चाहिने जुन आवश्यक स्पेस हो त्यसको कमी हुँदै गइराछ त्यसकारणले अब ठाउँ पायो भने कर्मसे इटा उद्योगहरु खुला क्षेत्रतिर स्थानान्तरण हुनुपर्ने अवस्था चाहिँ देखिएछ। If the brick factories are moved away from the cities and suburban areas to remote places it results in increased transportation cost as well as emission of climate pollutants such as BC carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide from diesel vehicles. With the beginning of monsoon, these kilns stop their operation as the land is utilized for agriculture purpose. It is a seasonal business. Similarly, there are some other major issues inside the industry, such as labor shortage, child labor, and increased fuel price. There has always been severe labor shortage in this sector, though many women from rural Nepal come to brick factories for seasonal employment, mainly in molding and loading the bricks, as many of the men prefer to go abroad for work. <laughs> And 90% of the skilled manpower involved in firing and stacking come from India. Skilled manpower, there are many companies in Nepal, there are many companies in as soon as the factories start their operation in winter, children are brought from remote areas for work. Children working in brick factories are mainly from 10 years and above. They come to work because of their poor financial status. Though they work hard in the factories, neither they get enough nutritious food nor education. The fuel price hike is up to 300% in the last five years. As part of the capacity building initiative for this sector, training should be provided to kiln owners and employees on improved technologies such as zigzag kilns, Hoffman kilns, tunnel kiln and better operating practices that promote the use of resource efficient clay fired products like hollow bricks, perforated bricks and unfired bricks. 
there is a need to take stock of the operating kilns, quantity and types of fuel used and emissions of particle matter, black carbon and carbon dioxide and to calculate emission factors for different fuels and technologies. The Ministry of Environment has set emission standards but there is a lack of regular monitoring. So far we have not been able to enforce the policy directive for defining the industrial you know, locations, industrial zones. But having said that, you know, there is always a cost when we uh, talk uh, about you know, these two things, um, environment and development. Uh, so our effort will always be to uh, minimize, the reduce the cost. There is a cost, so we have to choose a path very carefully as minimal as possible harm to environment we have to develop. Uh, the Ministry of Industry and uh, the whole uh, institution of the government of Nepal uh, is, uh, is sensitive and is, 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 is conscious of this uh, need to strike a balance. South-South exchange of technologies and knowledge transfer program could also be effective for improving operation of the factories through our world.